name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. And I pray that this will be a special day for you. This will be a special day for you in the name of Jesus. We bless him for such an opportunity to hear from him, to share his word, his knowledge, his logic. And most especially, to discover and understand who Jesus Christ is as we discover who we are. The power of the truth is you discover who God is in Christ, but at the same time you discover who you are in Christ. You see, that is the power of the truth. So the truth always reveals something about God and something about you. And it will never separate you from God. It always reveal your union with him and the power thereof and you reveal you that from this point of view you can now engage life uh, engage into different things that you do with this understanding it's so important for us not to miss the mark and missing the mark which is sinning is doubting and not accepting your true identity who are you today? Who are you today matters. It's not what people think you are. It's what you personally think you are. What matters is not what people say about you. It's what you say about yourself. So your inner perception, your inner understanding, what you know about yourself is very, very key in your life. So no one is uh, making yourself, uh, your life uh, a hell or complicating it it's mostly how we perceive things how we see things so the power of the truth is that our man, mindset is changed we come to discover the true the truth about ourselves we, we discover the truth about god and truth about us and that is what constitutes the truth truth is about who god is and who you are in him the rest is just uh, the implications of that truth Paul revealing us something very important. Colossians chapter 2 verse 11. He says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, but putting off the body of the sins of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. So he's saying something very powerful that in Christ Jesus who are circumcised but the circumcision which uh, took place in Christ was with no hands it means it was a special kind of circumcision I want to put it this way today that imagine if this circumcision really took place and the old circumcision which was a physical uh, circumcision made by the hands of men could have an impact on men such as David who said to the giant that if you are not circumcised that i'm circumcised now he was telling his fellow fellow uh, fellow citizens um the jews the israelites and he was telling them now how can this man you know uh despise those who are circumcised and yet he's not circumcised if he was saying that and it worked because he defeated the the giant how much more those who are now circumcised by the hands of God himself. When the circumcision of men took place, it, of course it was done by men. You know, the circumcision, this normal circumcision is done by men. But this circumcision is done by God in Christ. That means there is a divine touch, not men's touch. It is what is done by God, not what is done by men. So the circumcision was a sign in that. It meant you were now made special. But how is the person made special? By just taking off a part of his body. And that made him special. Imagine now today, if man became special by this simple circumcision made by the hands of men, how much more man would be or become if this circumcision is done by God? It's not just flesh, physical. It is done by God. And how can you be ordinary if those men who underwent the circumcision made by men were special? How much, how, how about you? 
what's gonna happen to you and it at this it is at this point that I'm insisting that you have to understand the power of circumcision that you were circumcised in him that means he did the work what is this work and that's what we're trying to understand we say it, it means to put off the, off the flesh, the, seed, the body of the sin of flesh. And he said that happened in, his, in, in, in the baptism, in the baptism of his death. The baptism of his death means what? It means that when he died, we died with him. When he entered death, we entered death with him. Or if you want, he found us in, his, in our death, in our state of death, and he wanted to save us from there. But once Jesus was buried, was when Jesus died, something happened that we died with him. That dying with him is so significant. It means there's a part that is gone, which is done in the flesh by circumc circumcising people and putting on a certain part of their body. And that means that once they are separated from what they used to be connected to, now the circumcision is taking place. The real circumcision is taking place because there's a disconnection, there's this connection from the old and the new is going to come. Jesus Christ dying was a statement and a message that the old has come to end. The old has come to an end. The new is going to come forth. Something new is going to begin. The old is gone. The new is coming. This is the meaning of circumcision. That the old is gone. You are separated from the old. You are connected to the new. It was a powerful statement. It was a work done by God. None among men was doing this. None of us was trying to help no it was done by the hands of god himself and he was saying now that i've done the work of separating you from the old and the old is talking about adam in whom were counted before jesus christ came were numbered were connected were under his rulership his power and the power and when he sinned, we became sinners. Imagine one man sinning and all men become sinners. Imagine how powerful he was, was the first man created. So all men were engendered by him. But then we were supposed to be separated from this fall, from this fall and state of being. That is what Jesus did. He separated us from this fall and the state of being were in as victims of Adam. Today, when he died, he was declaring a victory and declaring a separation, declaring the end of the reign of terror of Adam, the end of this uh, continuous perpetual sin syndrome embedded in men's psyche and in their souls. Men were sinners. And he was setting them free from Adam to the righteousness, to the righteous man, the only righteous man. Who was the righteousness of God on the earth? Christ Jesus. That is the meaning of circumcision. Circumcision means you are separated from the old. You are separated from what you used to have, what you used, where you used to be connected to. Now you are going to be connected to somewhere else or someone else. This is what happened. And today, in this verse, he says that buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So we were not only buried, we were buried and then raised, we were raised with him, which was the event that took place after death. So after death, there is resurrection. So all this happened at the same time. So the circumcision made, the end has come. As we have come to an end, but the beginning 
is also coming forth. Now I want to put it this to you. Like I said, imagine if the men who were circumcised by the hands of men, who were so special, were different. They could stand on that truth and shake nations. They, those who embraced this fact, they were different. They were so, so, so special. And they were a mark and a sign of victory in their time. How much more us now who are circumcised by God himself, not by the hands of men, through Christ Jesus, we are circumcised. We are made special, in other words. We are set free. And if we are set free, we are made righteous. We are separated. That means we are forgiven in Christ Jesus. We are forgiven our sins. We are healed in him. We are raised in him. We are set free in him. In him, we find everything that men could ever crave for much much more than what we could think or imagine so in christ we are free from the old in christ we are free from sin we are now the righteousness of god that is his perception towards us and we have to come to this the same perception we should have the same perception and that is the meaning of repentance repentance means Metanoia, changing the way you see things and see them the way God sees them. How, if you were wrong in the way you're perceiving yourself, your life, everything, now you begin to perceive them as God perceives them, that is repentance. Repentance is seeing things the way God sees them. And you can only repent or begin to see things the way God sees them by first and foremost receive his perception through his message. In other words, the message of his perception of how he sees things or how he perceives things should first come to you. You cannot just repent without the message. So the message will always show you this is how he sees things and it will help you to now weigh in and you discover, oh, so I've been seeing it differently and it's a wrong way. So I've got to see it this, in this way, the way God sees it. And that's repentance. So as I'm putting it to you now, you are in Christ. And if you are in Christ, it means you are special. It means you are made holy. It means you are separated from sin. It means you are forgiven. It means that you are, you are supposed to be jubilating in Him. You should be jubilating in Him. And it's so, so important for us to have this perception. Why? Because it heals us from the perception, the wrong perception, that erroneous mindset, erroneous perception we had about ourselves. We always think of ourselves as we lack something, we are behind, we, we don't have this, we don't have that. And we don't know how God perceives us or he knows us. But now this time, we know that once we're in Christ Jesus, we are circumcised with the true circumcision. So for the Jews, it was just a sign. For us, it's the reality. You are circumcised in Jesus Christ. And that's so powerful, it makes you special. Shalom.